Today, we welcome you back to our online worship service with Augustana Lutheran Church, Boone, Iowa. Our message today comes from Pastor Dan Solomon. Welcome to worship here at Augustana Lutheran Church as we come to the third Sunday of Easter, April 26th, 2020. As we have in the prior weeks, we invite you, if that's a possibility, to, to light a candle as we gather together. And as we light this candle, we're reminded how a candle in the darkness has for centuries uh, symbolized the presence of God. Jesus, the light of the world, present even in the midst of darkness. But even more than that today, we remember that each of us, Jesus says, is to be a light for the world. So not only do we gather around Christ, who is the light of the world, but we reflect Jesus' light into the world as we live and as we serve generously and graciously. We turn to our reading uh, for this third Sunday of Easter. It comes from the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Now on that same day, when Jesus' followers were told that he was risen, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And Jesus asked, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find Jesus' body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Now, as they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, the day is now nearly over. Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and is, he has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the road, and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking 
of the bread. Here ends our reading. We gather this weekend in a time of continued disruption, a time of continued uncertainty, where things have been dislocated, the rhythms of life, the rhythms of family, the rhythms of work, even the rhythms of worship. So much has sort of shifted beneath our feet. And we still are in a time of fear as this virus inflects illness and death upon those around the world. And as the days go past, many of us know family members who have uh, been stricken, infected with the virus, or loved ones who have died. Certainly within our congregation, we now have people whose family members who have died because of the virus, and yet another layer of dislocation is at the time of death, they can't be together. So much has shifted. It's almost disorienting. So many of us have looked to routines or actions as we hear, what can we do in the midst of all this uncertainty? Now this might seem really almost simple or overly simple, but one of the things that I've begun to do is to go outside for a walk every day. Um, I don't know, it seems like a small thing, but daily I go for a walk. Now most days I go just west here. If you've been to Augustana here, we sit just adjacent to the Linwood Park Cemetery, a beautiful cemetery that has wooded areas and a creek running through the middle of it, more than 150 years old. And there's something about being outdoors in the fresh air. Maybe part of it is um, just simply getting the body moving. And certainly as spring breaks out around us here in central Iowa, as things green up, as leaves come out, we see some of the early spring flowers. There's something about that too. I know just yesterday, as I went out for my walk, I came upon on the western edge of the section just across from the church here, a pair of bluebirds. Later yesterday, one of our members who is a neighbor here went walking and they saw six red fox kits playing outside their den. But that walk is more than that. For me, at least, it helps um, quiet my mind quiet my soul, and it opens me up to the presence of God, to the guidance of God. And especially in these days, it reminds me that, you know, we are on the way, that you and I, we are on a journey. So we turn to our gospel today. And even though we're a couple weeks past Easter on our calendars, our gospel takes us right back to that first Easter day, the afternoon. We hear that there are two disciples who are walking from Jerusalem uh, to Emmaus, a small village. It's about seven miles. And as they're walking along, think about what filled their minds, what filled their hearts the events of Good Friday, what had happened to their Lord and Savior, how they were so disappointed and heartbroken. It's poignant to hear him say, we had hoped that Jesus was the one, the one we had been waiting for. And yet they also then mention that there's some confusing news that morning that some of the women in their group had gone to the tomb and had come back and said, Jesus was gone. And it's amidst this journey, this walk on a dusty road, that Jesus appears. He appears to them in the midst of their disappointment, in the midst of their fears, even in the midst 
of their confusion. He joins them. And Jesus' presence on that road with these two, eventually, it takes a while, transforms the journey, the moment. What I want to focus on is how Jesus' presence is surprising. Surprising in a way. Two ways I really want to focus on. One of the ways that I think Jesus' presence with them is surprising is it seems unexpected. You know, we're not quite sure why they don't recognize Jesus, but I think it's easy for us to imagine that part of it is that they didn't expect to see Jesus. His presence there was unexpected. They were focused on Jesus' death. They were focused on Jesus' absence, not expecting Jesus to be present to join them on the road. Yeah, our expectations can really be powerful. They can, be, they can shape the very way we think. They can shape the way we see. Karl Barth, uh, one of the greatest theologians of the 20th century, uh, tells the story of one day he got on a streetcar in Basel, Switzerland, where he lived and taught. And he had been on the streetcar for a little while when a first-time tourist, a first-time visitor to Basel, got on and sat down next to Dr. Bart. And they began to chat. And uh, Bart asked this first-time tourist, you know, is there anything in particular you want to see when you're here in the city? And, and the first-time tourist said, well, yeah, you know, I really want to meet the famous theologian Karl Barth. You don't happen to know him, do you? At which Bart replied, I imagine with a twinkle of his eye, well, as a matter of fact, I do know him. In fact, I give him a shave every morning. Well, the tourist missed the obvious hint. And a few moments later, when he came to a stop, the tourist got off the streetcar and we can imagine he went back to his hotel where the other tourists were and told them the most amazing story that he had met Karl Barth's barber on a streetcar. The one he wanted to meet was sitting right next to him. He was talking to him, but he never expected to meet the famous person. Could it be that these, these two didn't expect to meet Jesus. And that expectation was a factor in this story. Well, the same can be true for us. Now, there's another thing that's surprising about Jesus' presence on that Easter afternoon into Easter evening. And that is, he appears in the midst of the ordinary. He doesn't come in like Spider-Man or Superman or Wonder Woman. I mean, it's not an earthquake. There are no lightning strikes. There's no advanced PR team that comes. He simply joins his disciples on a quiet walk. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated Easter Sunday, that, that, uh, that uh, victory of Jesus over death and the grave. And, you know, one of the things we talked about is how our Easter celebrations changed. You know, we couldn't be with our extended families and those kinds of things. We couldn't be in worship face-to-face uh, -face with fellow believers. Well, think about back to the first Easter. How did Jesus celebrate the first Easter? He celebrated by going for a long, slow walk with a couple of his friends. And I imagine, enjoyed the conversation enjoyed the moving of his body. Jesus appears, the risen one, the alive one, appears in the midst of the ordinary. That's the way Jesus works. The story is told from the days of World War I of a British soldier 
who was serving with his unit in the muddy trench warfare in the fields of France. It was horrible, kind of a slogging kind of battle. When one evening, this young British soldier, he simply lost heart. He couldn't do it anymore. Surrounded by the heartbreak and the death around him, and in the midst of a very dark evening, he just lost heart. And he deserted his unit. Now, in his mind, he was thinking, during the night he could make his way towards the coast of France and somehow catch a boat ride over to his native England. Well, the night was so dark, he couldn't even see his hand in front of his face. And so what happened was he ended up wandering around in pitch black. He was totally lost. In the midst of that darkness and confusion and lostness, he came upon, on the road where he was traveling, what he thought was a signpost. And as he looked up to the signpost, it was so dark, he couldn't even see what, was, what the signpost said. And he thought, well, if I'm ever going to get to the coast, i got to figure out where I am. So if you can imagine, he shimmied up the signpost. He got all the way up to what he thought was the top of it, and he still couldn't see what the sign said. So he struck a match. And imagine his surprise when he was looking face to face with the face of Jesus Christ. You see, what he had thought was a signpost was actually a roadside crucifix. And looking into the face of Jesus, this young soldier surrounded by dark and fear and death, said that he remembered what Jesus had done for him. He remembered how Jesus had endured in the midst of darkness. And most of all, he remembered Jesus' promised presence with each of Jesus' followers. The next morning found this young man back with his unit. Could it be that in the midst of these days, of uncertainty, of darkness, of fear, and even sickness and death around us, that we might focus on our expectations, that we might go forth expecting to meet the risen Jesus, to meet the risen Jesus even in the midst of the ordinary around us. I'd like to close uh, this time together with a Celtic prayer, um, a blessing. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands Stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. And may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Amen. Would you join with me in a word of prayer? Let us pray. Lord, in this Easter season, even as we as those two disciples on the road to Emmaus are marked with fear, surrounded by fear and darkness, by death itself, that you might help us discover your face, your light, and your love in the midst of the ordinary around us. 
Fill us with the joy and the power and the light of your resurrection. We pray for those who are affected by the coronavirus, COVID-19. We pray for those who are in, engaged in a battle for their lives. We pray for the recovering. We pray for those who have died and their families. And we pray for the most vulnerable among us. And we continue to lift before you all those who serve, the medical personnel, those who provide um, necessary services, especially here in Iowa, we pray for those who are involved in agriculture, in growing the food, providing the food, and for our meat processing folks, for those who are involved in transportation. We pray for our leaders, that they might be wise, that they might discern the wise way to go to work for the common good. And we pray for your church around the world, that we might be faithful and that we might lovingly and generously serve our neighbors. All this we pray to Christ, who promises to be with us always, even in the midst of the ordinary. Amen. Would you join with me as we pray together our Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as a closing, closing blessing, I'd like to use again the blessing that I used to close my sermon. Now may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to lovingly serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet See the face of Christ in you. Amen.